Sun Wukong, the Monkey King. In the previous video, we witnessed our heroes navigate some of the most perilous and transformative experiences on their journey westward. Sun Wukong's cunning and strength were tested against formidable opponents, while Xuan Zhang's unwavering commitment to his mission shone through the trials they faced. But as they push further into the unknown, the challenges only intensify. In this final episode, we explore chapters 74 through 100 of Journey to the West, where the journey reaches its climax and conclusion. The pilgrims encounter powerful adversaries, where the stakes have never been higher. Sun Wukong and his companions face battles that will test their resolve, their loyalty, and their very sense of purpose. Along the way, they encounter both divine intervention and diabolical deception, making these chapters some of the most thrilling and significant in their entire quest. Join me as we dive into the final leg of this epic journey, where every encounter brings our heroes closer to their ultimate goal, the Western Paradise. As we resume our story, the pilgrims arrive at the dangerous region of Lion Camel Ridge, Shi Tuo Ling. This mountain is home to three powerful demons who are plotting to capture and devour the monk Xuanzang to gain his spiritual power. Sun Wukong, the ever-vigilant Monkey King, takes notice of a group of demon minions patrolling the mountain. Recognizing the threat they posed, he decides to gather information. Sun Wukong uses his shape-shifting abilities to disguise himself as a senior minion, blending in with the group. In this guise, he begins to question the minions, and they unknowingly divulge crucial details about their masters, the three demon kings, and their sinister plans to capture Zhuanzang and defeat Sun Wukong. Having acquired the information he needed, Sun Wukong swiftly kills the demon minions, ensuring that they won't alert their masters. He then takes the appearance of one of the fallen demons and heads toward the demon's cave to investigate further. When he arrives outside the cave, Sun Wukong encounters another group of demon minions. Deciding to have some fun and unsettle the demons, he starts telling them exaggerated and terrifying stories about the Monkey King's powers. The stories are so horrific that the minions are paralyzed with fear, and they soon flee in terror. This clever ruse allows Sun Wukong to enter the cave without resistance. After successfully infiltrating the demon's cave by disguising himself as a demon minion, Sun Wukong finds himself face to face with the three formidable demon kings who rule over Lion Camel Ridge. These three kings are no ordinary demons. They are the Lion Demon King, the Elephant Demon King, and the Rock Demon King. Each possesses immense power, making them formidable adversaries. Still in his disguise, Sun Wukong listens carefully as the demons discuss their plans. The Lion Demon King mentions his desire to devour Xuanzang, believing that consuming the monk will grant him immortality. Meanwhile, the other two demon kings express their eagerness to defeat Sun Wukong and his companions. To gather more information and sow confusion, Sun Wukong conjures up a tiny fly and sends it buzzing around the room. The two elder demon kings, Lion and Elephant, immediately grow suspicious. Thinking that Sun Wukong might have somehow infiltrated the cave, they begin to panic, much to the amusement of the disguised Monkey King, who can't help but giggle at their paranoia. However, in his moment of amusement, Sun Wukong inadvertently reveals his true face. The sharp-eyed rock demon king, who is more perceptive than his companions, notices the change in Wukong's appearance and immediately realizes that this minion is actually the dreaded Monkey King in disguise. Without hesitation, the rock demon king orders his guards to detain Sun Wukong. Despite his formidable strength and abilities, Sun Wukong is captured and thrown into the Rock Demon King's treasure, an enchanted Yin Yang Twin Energy Vase, Yin Yang Er Chi Ping. This mystical vase is designed to melt anything placed inside it, posing a significant threat to Wukong. However, the Monkey King is not so easily defeated. Remembering the life-saving hairs that Bodhisattva Guan Yin had given him at the beginning of their journey, Wukong uses them to create a diamond drill. With this tool, he drills a hole in the vase and escapes, 
much to the astonishment of the demon kings. Undeterred by his narrow escape, Sun Wukong quickly returns to gather reinforcements. He brings along Zhu Bajie to help him battle the demon kings. However, during the ensuing battle, the lion demon king manages to swallow Wukong whole. Terrified, Zhu Baji retreats, leaving Wukong to fend for himself inside the demon's stomach. Trapped inside the stomach of the lion demon king, Sun Wukong realizes that he must act quickly if he is to survive and defeat the demon. Using his incredible strength and agility, Wukong begins to wreak havoc inside the Lion King's body. He kicks, punches, and jumps around, causing the demon immense pain and discomfort. The Lion King, unable to withstand the torment, finally surrenders and begs for mercy. In response to the Lion King's submission, Wukong agrees to leave his body, but only after the demon promises to release Xuanzang and his companions. The Lion King, now completely subdued, honors his word and allows Wukong to exit his body safely. However, the battle is far from over. The Elephant Demon King, witnessing the defeat of his comrade, refuses to surrender. Filled with rage, the Elephant King challenges Sun Wukong and the others to a fierce battle. Zhu Baji is sent to confront the Elephant King, but despite his best efforts, he is no match for the demon's immense strength and is soon captured by the Elephant King who uses his powerful dragon-like trunk to incarcerate him. Realizing that Zhu Baji is in danger, Xuanzang commands Sun Wukong to rescue him. Wukong, ever loyal to his master, immediately sets out to confront the Elephant King. The battle between Wukong and the Elephant King is intense, with both sides displaying incredible power and skill. However, Wukong's determination and agility ultimately prove to be too much for the Elephant King. After a long and grueling fight, the Elephant King is finally defeated and, like the Lion King before him, surrenders to Wukong. In a gesture of peace, the Elephant King offers to escort the pilgrims across the mountain, ensuring their safe passage. However, just as the pilgrims begin to feel a sense of relief, the Rock Demon King emerges to obstruct their journey. The Rock King, furious at the defeat of his comrades, attacks the pilgrims with renewed ferocity. In the ensuing chaos, the three demon kings join forces to battle Sun Wukong, Zhu Baji, and Sha Wujing, while their minions seize the opportunity to kidnap Xuanzang. Despite their best efforts, the pilgrims are unable to hold off the combined might of the three demon kings and are eventually overpowered. The Rock Demon King, in particular, proves to be a formidable adversary, even outmatching Sun Wukong in combat. The pilgrims are captured and placed into a steamer, where the demon kings plan to cook them alive for a feast. The situation seems dire, but Sun Wukong, ever resourceful, manages to escape from the steamer in the middle of the night. He quickly frees the other pilgrims, and they make a desperate attempt to escape from the demon's lair. Unfortunately, the demon kings notice their escape and give chase, recapturing the pilgrims. Only Wukong manages to flee in time, realizing that he has no choice but to seek the aid of the Tathagata Buddha to subdue the powerful demon kings. Sun Wukong quickly travels to the Western Paradise, where he pleads with the Tathagata for help in subduing the powerful demons. The Buddha, understanding the gravity of the situation and the importance of the pilgrim's journey to retrieve the sacred scriptures, agrees to intervene. He descends from the Western Paradise to Lion Camel Ridge where the demons have imprisoned the pilgrims and are preparing to feast on them. As the Tathagata Buddha arrives, his mere presence causes a dramatic shift in the balance of power. The lion and elephant demon kings, who have previously shown no fear of any opponent, immediately recognize the Buddha's authority. The lion demon king and elephant demon king both bow before the Tathagata, revealing their true identities. They are not ordinary demons, but the transformed forms of the steeds belonging to two powerful bodhisattvas. Realizing the mistake they have made in opposing the pilgrims, they immediately submit to the Buddha's will and revert to their original forms, returning to their masters. The rock demon king, however, does not surrender as easily. This demon, who is one of the most powerful the pilgrims have faced, is determined to hold his ground. The rock demon king's immense power and arrogance 
make him a more difficult opponent, but even he cannot withstand the might of the Tathagata Buddha. After a brief but intense confrontation, the rock demon king is subdued by the Buddha, who then places him under tight control, ensuring that he can no longer pose a threat to the pilgrims or anyone else. With the demons defeated and subdued, the Buddha releases Xuanzang, Zhu Bajie, and Xia Wu Jing from captivity. The pilgrims, who had been on the brink of death, are profoundly grateful for the Buddha's intervention. They understand that without the Buddha's aid, their journey might have come to a tragic end at Lion Camel Ridge. After their narrow escape from the Demon Kings, the pilgrims continue their journey and soon arrive at the Kingdom of Bhiksu, a realm marked by a strange and unsettling sight. As they walk through the streets, they notice hundreds of cages filled with children, all lined up as if awaiting a grim fate. Disturbed by this scene, Xuanzang and his disciples inquire about the situation from the locals. They learn that years ago, the King of Bhiksu fell gravely ill after being enchanted by the beautiful daughter of a Taoist priest. The Taoist priest, who claimed to possess great knowledge and power, convinced the king that the only cure for his illness was to consume an elixir made from the hearts of 1,111 children. Desperate to regain his health, the king ordered the capture and sacrifice of the children, resulting in the horrifying spectacle that now surrounds the pilgrims. The Taoist priest, however, has recently advised the king that a single heart, that of a holy monk like Xuanzang, would be even more potent than the hearts of 1,111 children. Learning of this, Sun Wukong quickly devises a plan to protect his master and the innocent children. Sun Wukong transforms himself into an exact replica of Xuanzang, taking on his appearance to trick the Taoist priest and the king. He willingly steps forward to be sacrificed, knowing that he can escape any danger with his powers. Meanwhile, the real Xuanzang and the other disciples, Zhu Bajie and Xia Wu Jing, take the caged children to a safe place under the protection of local deities. At the sacrificial ceremony, the disguised Sun Wukong plays along, allowing the Taoist priest to prepare for the ritual. When the moment comes, Sun Wukong dramatically cuts open his chest, revealing a pile of hearts. However, as the Taoist priest examines each heart, he realizes none of them is the black heart he seeks, the sign of a holy monk. Realizing that something is wrong, the Taoist priest's suspicions grow. At this critical moment, Sun Wukong reveals his true identity, transforming back into the Monkey King. The Taoist priest, recognizing Sun Wukong as the great sage, panics and flees with his daughter. With the truth now exposed, the king learns that the Taoist priest and his daughter were not what they seemed. They were, in fact, demons in disguise. Infuriated and betrayed, the king orders a hunt for the demons. Sun Wukong and Zhu Baji take on the task, pursuing the fleeing demons with the intent to eliminate them and end their reign of terror. The pursuit leads them to the demon's lair, where a fierce battle ensues. The demon daughter, in particular, proves to be a formidable opponent using her wits and dark magic to evade capture. In the midst of the battle, the star of longevity, Shuxing, arrives and intervenes. Shuxing reveals that the Taoist priest is actually his runaway steed, a white deer that had been corrupted by demonic energy. The deer, now subdued, is returned to Shuxing's control, ending its threat. However, the demon daughter, who is a vixen spirit, refuses to surrender and continues to fight. Sun Wukong, with his unmatched strength and cunning, eventually defeats the vixen spirit, ensuring that she can no longer harm anyone. With the demons vanquished, the local people, who had been under the priest's sinister influence, are freed from his tyranny. The pilgrims, having once again triumphed over evil, resume their journey with renewed determination. The children who had been imprisoned are freed and returned to their families, bringing peace back to the kingdom of Bixu. As the pilgrims continue their journey, they find themselves in a dense and ancient pine forest. The atmosphere is heavy and foreboding, and the group senses that something is not right. Xuanzang, ever the compassionate soul, is soon drawn to the sound of a faint, distressed voice calling for help. 
Despite Sun Wukong's warnings that it might be a trap, Xuanzang's empathy compels him to investigate. The voice leads them to a young woman buried waist-deep in the ground and tied to a tree. She appears to be in great distress, begging to be rescued. Sun Wukong, with his keen senses, immediately recognizes her as a demon in disguise, likely luring unsuspecting victims to their doom. He advises Zhuangzang to ignore her pleas and continue their journey, knowing full well the dangers that such a demon could pose. However, Xuanzang's compassion overrules Wukong's caution. He orders Du Bajie to dig the girl out and free her, despite Wukong's protests. Reluctantly, Zhu Bajie follows the command, and they bring the demon girl along with them, intending to return her to her home. The group soon arrives at a Buddhist monastery, where they request lodging for the night. The monks, unaware of the true nature of their new companion, agree to let them stay. As night falls, the monks mention that a demon has been terrorizing the monastery, preying on the monks and consuming them one by one. The pilgrims suspect that the demon girl they rescued might be connected to these sinister events. Sun Wukong decides to take matters into his own hands. That night, he disguises himself as a young monk to lure the demon girl out. True to her nature, the girl attempts to seduce the young monk, intending to marry him and potentially devour him as she had the others. Unfortunately for her, the young monk is actually Wukong, who reveals his true form and attacks her. However, the demon girl is not easily defeated. She uses her magic to create a decoy, transforming her slipper into a duplicate of herself to distract Wukong while she makes her escape. Seizing the opportunity, she also manages to kidnap Xuanzang before retreating to her mountain cave. The next morning, Sun Wukong, Zhu Baji, and Xia Wujing realize that Xuanzang is missing. They consult the local deities, who inform them of the demon's lair in the bottomless cave, Wu Didong. The three disciples immediately set out to rescue their master, determined to save him from the clutches of the demon. During their search, Sun Wukong, Zhu Baji, and Xia Wujing encounter two demon maidens who serve the demon girl. The maidens reveal that their mistress is resolute in her plan to marry Xuanzang. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Wukong decides to take action before the wedding can proceed any further. Wukong's first attempt to sabotage the wedding involves transforming into a fly a form small enough to infiltrate the demon's stronghold without detection. He lands in the demon's cup of wine, hoping that she will drink it and inadvertently consume him, allowing him to cause chaos from within her body. However, the demon girl is more cautious than Wukong anticipated. She notices the tiny fly in her drink and flicks it away, foiling Wukong's plan. Undeterred, Wukong hatches another scheme. This time, he transforms into a hawk, a more imposing form, and descends upon the wedding preparations with the intent to disrupt everything. Wukong dives into the cave and wreaks havoc on the demon's meticulous setup. He knocks over tables, scatters food and drink, and tears down decorations, completely dismantling the demon girl's plans for the wedding. The demon girl is enraged by Wukong's interference and confronts him in a furious battle. Although she is powerful, Wukong's agility and strength give him the upper hand. He continues to sabotage her efforts, leaving her unable to proceed with the wedding. Recognizing that brute force alone won't be enough to defeat the demon girl, Wukong devises a more cunning plan. He transforms himself into a peach, a fruit that the demon girl loves, and has Xuanzang presented to her as a gift. When the demon girl takes a bite of the peach, Wukong causes tremendous pain from within her body, forcing her to release Xuanzang from the cave. The demon girl, now desperate and enraged, attempts one final trick. She creates a decoy again by transforming one of her slippers into a duplicate of herself to distract the disciples giving herself a chance to escape. While the three disciples are preoccupied with the decoy, the real demon girl manages to recapture Xuanzang and flee to the bottomless cave once more. This time, she intends to ensure that the monk cannot escape again. Wukong, realizing that they have been tricked, becomes furious and intensifies his efforts to rescue his master. 
he infiltrates the bottomless cave, where he uncovers two plaques that the demon girl worships. These plaques bear the names of her adopted father and brother, Heavenly King Li and Prince Neja. Wukong sees this as an opportunity and decides to bring this information to heaven. Wukong flies to heaven to file a complaint against the demon girl, explaining her ties to these celestial figures. When he confronts Neja, the prince reveals that the demon girl is actually a golden-nosed white-haired rat, Jin Bi by Mao Lao Shu, who had been causing trouble on Earth. Neja, recognizing the need to address this problem, agrees to help Wukong subdue the demon. Neja gathers his troops and follows Wukong back to the bottomless cave. The battle that ensues is intense, with Neja and his forces joining Wukong, Zhu Baji, and Sha Wu Jing in their effort to defeat the demon girl. Despite her cunning and powerful tricks, the combined might of the celestial forces and the disciples proves too much for her. Neja and his troops successfully capture the demon girl, subduing her once and for all. She is taken into custody by the celestial forces, and Xuanzang is finally freed from her grasp. The demon's reign of terror ends as she is removed from the mortal realm, ensuring that she will no longer pose a threat to anyone. With the demon girl defeated and Xuanzang rescued, the pilgrims continue their journey westward. Though they have overcome yet another formidable foe, they know that more challenges lie ahead as they approach the final stages of their quest. After their harrowing encounter with the demon girl, the pilgrims continue their journey and eventually reach the kingdom of Dharma destroying, Miefa Guo, a place where Buddhism is under severe persecution. The king of this kingdom has vowed to kill 10,000 Buddhist monks, and so far, he has already executed 9,996. This grim reality weighs heavily on the pilgrims as they approach the kingdom's borders. Knowing that they will not be admitted into the kingdom as Buddhist monks, the pilgrims disguise themselves. They change out of their monk robes and don secular clothing, even wearing hats to cover their shaved heads. This clever disguise allows them to pass through the kingdom's gates without drawing attention to themselves. Once inside the kingdom, they find an inn to rest. However, their respite is short-lived as bandits break into the inn during the night, mistakenly thinking that the pilgrim's trunk contains treasure. The bandits steal the trunk, but before they can escape, the royal guards arrive. The bandits flee, leaving the trunk behind, which the guards seize and take to the palace, unaware of its true contents. As the palace settles into sleep, Sun Wukong devises a plan to teach the wicked king a lesson. He conjures up hundreds of razor blades and using his magical powers, shaves off the hair of everyone in the palace, the king, queen, guards and maids, leaving them all bald like monks. This act not only humiliates the king and his court, but also instills fear that their baldness is a divine punishment for their crimes against Buddhism. When the palace awakes to the shocking discovery, the king is terrified. He interprets the sudden balding as a sign from the heavens, punishing him for his vow to exterminate Buddhist monks. Fearing divine retribution, the king decides to repent. He promises to honor and protect all Buddhist monks from then on, and orders his ministers to ensure that Buddhism is respected within his kingdom. Relieved that their disguise worked and that the king has had a change of heart, the pilgrims have their travel rescript certified, allowing them to safely pass through the kingdom without further trouble. They leave the kingdom of Dharma destroying behind, once again continuing their journey westward, grateful for having avoided what could have been a dire situation. As the pilgrims leave the kingdom of Dharma destroying, they continue their westward journey and soon reach a mountainous region. While traveling through this area, they encounter a powerful demon known as the Great King of South Mountain, Nan Shan Da Wang. The demon upon seeing the pilgrims, especially Xuanzang, immediately becomes interested in capturing them. Zhu Bajie, always eager to prove his strength, engages the demon king in combat. Despite Zhu Baji's formidable power, the Demon King proves to be a challenging opponent. The battle is intense, but ultimately, Zhu Baji gains the upper hand, forcing the Demon King to retreat to his cave. 
Humiliated by his defeat, the Demon King begins to plot his revenge. One of his clever minions suggests a plan to deceive the pilgrims by creating three decoy versions of the Demon King. These decoys would lure Sun Wukong, Zhu Bajie, and Sha Wujing away from Xuanzang, leaving their master vulnerable to capture by the real Demon King. Impressed by the cunning plan, the Demon King agrees and quickly puts it into action. The plan works flawlessly. The three decoys appear before the pilgrims, and as expected, Sun Wukong, Zhu Bajie, and Sha Wujing engage them in battle, believing they are fighting the real Demon King. While the disciples are occupied with the decoys, the real Demon King sneaks past them and captures Xuanzang, bringing him back to his cave. After defeating the decoys, the disciples realize they have been tricked. Panic sets in as they understand that Xuanzang has been captured. They rush back to the Demon King's lair, but by the time they arrive, Xuanzang has already been imprisoned, and the cave is heavily fortified against their attacks. With Xuanzang held captive and the three disciples unable to breach the Demon King's defenses, the situation grows dire. The pilgrims are faced with the daunting task of rescuing their master from the clutches of a cunning and powerful foe, a challenge that will require not only strength, but also cleverness and strategy. Upon reaching the entrance of the cave, the three disciples demand the release of Zhuanzang. In response, the demons throw out a human head, claiming that they have already eaten Xuanzang. The sight of the head enrages Sun Wukong, who believes it to be real. In a fury, Wukong smashes down the cave door with his powerful staff, and a fierce battle ensues between the pilgrims and the demon army. The demon king, knowing the strength of the pilgrims, sends his entire army to fight against them. However, Sun Wukong, using his magical abilities, clones himself into hundreds of copies, each wielding a version of his gold-banded staff. The sight of an army of Wukongs overwhelms the demons, and the battle quickly turns in favor of the pilgrims. Despite the strength and bravery of the Demon King and his minions, they are no match for Wukong's clones. The Demon Army is decimated, and the Demon King, realizing his impending defeat, attempts to flee. While searching the cave, Wukong discovers that Xuanzang is still alive. Overjoyed, Wukong quickly casts a sleeping spell on the remaining demons, rendering them unconscious. He then unties Xuanzang and carries him out of the cave. As the disciples prepare to leave, they decide to make sure the Demon King cannot harm anyone else. Wukong and Zhu Baji set the demon's lair on fire, and the flames quickly consume the cave. The Demon King, who had transformed into a spotted leopard demon in a last-ditch effort to escape, is killed in the blaze. With the Demon King defeated and Xuanzang rescued, the pilgrims can continue their journey westward. As the pilgrims continue their journey westward, they arrive at the Phoenix Immortal Prefecture, Fengxianjun, a place suffering from a severe drought that has lasted for three long years. The land is parched, crops have failed, and the people are in despair. The pilgrims learn that the drought is not a natural occurrence, but a divine punishment imposed by the Jade Emperor himself. Curious about the cause of the drought, Sun Wukong flies up to heaven to investigate. He inquires with the celestial officials and learns that the captain of Phoenix Immortal Prefecture had committed a grave offense against heaven. In response, the Jade Emperor decreed that the prefecture would suffer a drought until three impossible tasks were completed. These tasks involved the destruction of three items, a mountain of rice, a mountain of flour, and a golden lock, all set up by the Jade Emperor. The rice and flour must be nibbled away by a chicken and a dog, respectively, and the lock must be melted by a small flame. Only when these tasks are completed will the rains return. Sun Wukong, determined to help the people and end the drought, returns to the prefecture and meets with the leader. He explains the situation and encourages the leader to sincerely repent for his actions, convert to Buddhism, and worship heaven with utmost devotion. The leader, desperate to save his people, follows Wukong's advice and performs the necessary rituals with genuine contrition. Moved by the leader's sincerity and the efforts of Sun Wukong, 
the Jade Emperor orders the disappearance of the impossible tasks. As the rice and flower mountains vanish and the golden lock melts away, the long-awaited rain begins to fall, bringing relief and prosperity back to the land. The people of Phoenix Immortal Prefecture rejoice, grateful for the intervention of the pilgrims. With the drought ended and the prefecture restored to its former glory, the pilgrims continue their journey westward, leaving behind a land saved by their actions and the power of genuine repentance. The pilgrims soon arrive at Jade Flower Province, Yu Huazhou, a prosperous and culturally rich region where they are welcomed by the Grand Prince of the land. The Grand Prince is a gracious host and he introduces the pilgrims to his three sons, who are fascinated by the presence of Sun Wukong, Zhu Bajie, and Sha Wujing. However, the three young princes, unfamiliar with the true nature of the pilgrims, initially see them as monstrous beings and challenge them to a duel. Eager to demonstrate their abilities and perhaps teach the young princes a lesson, Sun Wukong, Zhu Bajie, and Sha Wujing accept the challenge. The ensuing display of combat skills is nothing short of spectacular. Sun Wukong wields his gold-banded staff with unmatched dexterity, Zhu Baji brandishes his nine-toothed rake with brute strength, and Sha Wujing swings his crescent moon spade with precision. The young princes, awestruck by the pilgrims' prowess and magical abilities, quickly realize their inferiority and submit to the pilgrims as their martial arts masters. Impressed by the young prince's willingness to learn, the pilgrims agree to train them. As part of their training, the three disciples lend their weapons to a local blacksmith to forge lighter replicas for the princes to practice with. The divinity of these original weapons, imbued with the essence of the three pilgrims, draws the attention of a nearby demon, the Yellow Lion Demon, Wang Shujing. That night, the Yellow Lion Demon sneaks into the city, lured by the divine aura emanating from the weapons. He is captivated by their power and recognizes them as great treasures. Under the cover of darkness, the Yellow Lion Demon steals the weapons and escapes into the night. The loss of these powerful artifacts leaves the pilgrims at a significant disadvantage and sets the stage for a new conflict. After discovering that their weapons have been stolen by the Yellow Lion Demon, Sun Wukong sets out to gather information on the whereabouts of the demon. Through his network of celestial and earthly contacts, Wukong learns from two demon minions that the Yellow Lion Demon is hosting a grand celebration to commemorate his acquisition of the divine treasures. The demon, confident in his newfound power, has invited other demons to join him in a feast. Soon Wukong devises a plan to infiltrate the celebration and recover the stolen weapons. He and Zhu Bajie disguise themselves as demon minions, while Sha Wujing takes on the role of an animal trader, bringing meat as a tribute to the party. Their disguises allow them to enter the demon's lair undetected. As the feast progresses, the three disciples make their move. Spotting their stolen weapons on display, they immediately rush to reclaim them. A fierce battle ensues within the demon's cave, with Sun Wukong, Zhu Bajie, and Sha Wujing unleashing their full strength on the surprise demons. The Yellow Lion Demon, realizing he is outmatched, flees the scene abandoning his lair and the stolen weapons. However, the Yellow Lion Demon is not willing to accept defeat. He retreats to seek help from his grandfather, the primal sage of Ninefold Numina, Juling Yuan Sheng, a powerful and ancient demon lord. The primal sage, angered by the treatment of his grandson, agrees to aid him in seeking revenge against the pilgrims. The primal sage leads a formidable army of lion warriors and demon minions to attack Jade Flower Province, aiming to overwhelm the pilgrims and reclaim the weapons. The impending battle threatens not only the pilgrims, but also the peace of Jade Flower Province. As the primal sage of Ninefold Numina advances on Jade Flower Province with his army, Sun Wukong, Zhu Baji, and Sha Wujing prepare to defend the region. The battle between the pilgrims and the lion demon army is fierce with both sides showcasing their considerable powers. Despite their best efforts, the pilgrims find themselves outnumbered and outmatched by the overwhelming force of the lion warriors. During the battle, Jubaji is captured by the primal sage, who then reveals his true form, 
a colossal nine-headed lion. This terrifying form strikes fear into the hearts of the kingdom as the primal sage uses his many mouths to seize Xuanzang, the Grand Prince, and the three young princes. With his companions captured and the situation growing dire, Sun Wukong realizes that brute strength alone will not win this battle. Desperate to save his master and allies, Sun Wukong retreats from the battlefield, seeking advice from the local deities. They suggest that Wukong seek the help of the celestial worthy of supreme unity, Tai Yi Tianzun, the master of the nine-headed lion. Following their advice, Wukong quickly ascends to the heavens to find the celestial worthy. Moved by Wukong's plea, the celestial worthy agrees to intervene. He descends to the mortal realm, accompanied by his lion tamer. Upon seeing his master, the primal sage, realizing that his time of rebellion has come to an end, submits to the celestial worthy and reverts to his original form as a nine-headed lion steed. The captured pilgrims and princes are freed and peace is restored to Jade Flower Province. The pilgrim's journey brings them to Gold Level Prefecture, Jinping Fu, where they arrive just in time to witness the annual Lantern Festival. The festival is a grand event, with lanterns of all shapes and sizes illuminating the night sky. Amidst the celebrations, a miraculous sight captivates the crowd. The figures of three Buddhas appear in the sky. The pilgrims, along with the rest of the crowd, bow in reverence, but Sun Wukong quickly realizes that something is amiss. His keen senses tell him that these Buddhas are imposters. Sun Wukong flies up to confront the fake Buddhas, but before he can act, the demons reveal their true forms as rhinoceros demons. They quickly abduct Xuanzang and flee, leaving Sun Wukong and the other disciples scrambling to rescue their master. Sun Wukong chases the demons to their mountain lair, where he finds that the entire demon army is prepared for battle. Despite his immense power, Wukong finds himself outnumbered and outmaneuvered. The three rhinoceros demons prove to be formidable opponents, using their immense strength and magical abilities to fend off Wukong's attacks. Recognizing that he cannot defeat them alone, Wukong retreats to regroup and plan his next move. Sun Wukong returns to Zhu Jie and Sha Wu Jing, and together, they strategize on how to take down the rhinoceros demons. They know that a direct confrontation will likely result in defeat, so they seek out reinforcements from the heavenly realm. Their hope lies in gathering enough celestial power to overwhelm the demons and save Xuanzang. He travels to the heavenly palace and requests assistance from the Jade Emperor, who advises him to enlist the help of the four wood creature stars, Simu Chin Xing, celestial beings with the power to control and subdue creatures of the earth. The Jade Emperor grants Sun Wukong's request, and the four wood creature stars, each embodying a different aspect of nature, descend to the mortal realm to aid the pilgrims. These celestial beings are ancient and powerful, with abilities that surpass even those of the most fearsome demons. They agree to join Wukong in his mission to defeat the rhinoceros demons and rescue Xuanzang. Armed with this celestial reinforcement, Sun Wukong and the four wood creature stars return to the demon's mountain lair. The rhinoceros demons, upon seeing their arch rivals, immediately realize the danger they are in. The four wood stars are known for their ability to counter and neutralize the powers of earthbound creatures, making them the perfect adversaries for the rhino demons. The battle is intense, with the rhinoceros demons desperately trying to escape the inevitable confrontation. They flee all the way to the West Sea, hoping to find refuge, but their path is blocked by Prince Moang's army, who have been alerted to the situation. The combined forces of the four wood creature stars and Prince Moang's army quickly subdue the rhino demons. Captured and powerless, the rhinoceros demons are brought back to Gold Level Prefecture, where they are later executed for their crimes. The victory is a significant one for the pilgrims, as it demonstrates the importance of divine intervention and the strength that comes from unity and cooperation. With the rhino demons defeated, the pilgrims can once again focus on their journey westward, now more determined than ever to reach their ultimate goal. The pilgrims continue their journey and eventually come to a Buddhist monastery where they are warmly welcomed by the priests. 
During their stay, they hear a sorrowful weeping coming from one of the temple's rooms. Curious, they inquire about the source of the crying and learn that it is a young woman who claims to be the Princess of India. The priests explain that the woman was found wandering and that they have kept her in the monastery until her true identity could be verified and she could be safely returned to her parents. The next day, the pilgrims finally reach India and find it abuzz with activity. The streets are filled with people as the Princess of India is about to perform a traditional ceremony, tossing an embroidered ball into the crowd to choose her husband. The custom dictates that the man who catches the ball will become her spouse. As the event unfolds, the princess deliberately throws the ball at Xuanzang, who, taken by surprise, catches it by accident. The crowd immediately recognizes the significance, and Xuanzang is declared the chosen husband. Sun Wukong, always vigilant and suspicious, advises Xuanzang to play along with the charade, believing that the princess might be a demon in disguise. Despite his reluctance, Xuanzang follows Wukong's advice and agrees to the marriage, hoping to uncover the truth. The pilgrims are invited to the palace for a celebratory meal before the wedding. However, Wukong remains cautious, sensing that something is amiss. He decides to investigate further, suspecting that the princess may not be who she claims to be. The king, delighted with the arrangement, visits his daughter to discuss the final preparations for the wedding. During this meeting, the princess expresses a peculiar request. She asks her father to send Xuanzang's three hideous disciples, Sun Wukong, Zhu Bajie, and Sha Wu Jing, out of the city. She claims that their presence would frighten her during the wedding ceremony. The king, eager to please his daughter, immediately complies with her wishes. He certifies the pilgrim's travel rescript, allowing them to pass through the city's gates, and orders Sun Wukong, Zhu Bajie, and Sha Wu Jing to leave the city. While the disciples depart, Sun Wukong secretly instructs Zhu Bajie and Sha Wu Jing to stay on the outskirts of the city, ready to assist if needed. Wu Kong himself transforms into a tiny bee and hides in Xuanzang's hat, determined to stay close and keep an eye on the situation. As night falls and the palace prepares for the wedding, the atmosphere grows tense. Xuanzang, nervous but trusting Wu Kong's plan, enters the inner palace, with Wu Kong hidden in his hat. The Princess of India enters, and her demeanor instantly raises Wu Kong's suspicions. As she approaches Xuanzang, Wu Kong decides it's time to act. He reveals himself and confronts the princess, accusing her of being a demon in disguise. The princess tries to defend herself, but her attempts are futile against Wu Kong's sharp instincts. A battle ensues between Wu Kong and the princess, who indeed reveals her true form as a demon. However, just as Wu Kong is about to deliver the final blow, a commanding voice echoes through the palace halting his attack. The Star Lord of Supreme Yin and other lunar goddesses descend from the heavens, revealing that the demon is actually the Jade Rabbit, a celestial being who had taken on human form and escaped from the moon. The Star Lord and her entourage subdue the Jade Rabbit, gently but firmly taking her back to her rightful place on the moon. The real Princess of India is then identified as the young woman back at the temple and is returned to her parents in the palace. The deception unraveled, and with the real princess safe, the pilgrims prepare to continue their journey. The pilgrims' journey takes them to the residence of Squire Ku, a wealthy and devout man known for his generosity towards Buddhist monks. Squire Ku has made a vow to feed 10,000 monks, and by the time the pilgrims arrive, he has already reached 9,996. The arrival of the four pilgrims seems to be the fulfillment of his vow. The pilgrims are warmly welcomed and are treated to lavish vegetarian meals during their stay. Squire Ko's hospitality knows no bounds, and he takes great joy in catering to the pilgrims' needs, seeing them as the final guests to complete his noble goal. After three days, Xuanzang feels it is time to continue their journey. As a token of appreciation and to celebrate the completion of his vow, Squire Ku prepares a grand parade to send the pilgrims off. The atmosphere is festive, and the pilgrims leave Squire Ku's residence in high spirits, 
grateful for his kindness and generosity. Unbeknownst to them, tragedy strikes that very night. Squire Koo's home is robbed by a gang of bandits, and in the chaos, Squire Koo is murdered. His wife, overcome with grief and anger, blames the pilgrims for bringing misfortune upon their household, despite their innocence. She falsely accuses them of theft and murder, setting in motion a chain of events that will test the pilgrims' resolve and integrity. As the pilgrims continue on their journey, unaware of the tragedy that has befallen Squire Ku, they encounter the bandits who had robbed and murdered him. Soon Wukong quickly realizes what has happened and forces the bandits to drop the stolen goods. Rather than punishing them further, he spares their lives and decides to return the stolen items to Squire Ko's home, hoping to clear their names and right the wrong. However, as the pilgrims approach Squire Ku's residence, they are met by local authorities who have been informed of the alleged theft and murder. The pilgrims are arrested and taken into custody, falsely accused of crimes they did not commit. Sun Wukong, ever resourceful, easily escapes from captivity and sets out to clear their names. He travels around the region, assuming the forms of various deities and spirits to inform the people of the truth. His cunning and quick thinking gradually reveal the real culprits and he ensures that the villagers learn of the pilgrim's innocence. Determined to fully resolve the situation, Wukong even travels to the underworld to bring Squire Ku back to life. With Squire Ku revived, the truth is finally revealed and the pilgrims are exonerated. Squire Ku's wife, realizing her mistake, is filled with remorse and gratitude. The pilgrims are freed and they continue their journey with a renewed sense of purpose knowing that they have once again triumphed over injustice. After enduring many trials and tribulations, the pilgrims finally arrive at the base of Spirit Mountain, the sacred destination of their long and perilous journey. The mountain stands as a towering beacon of their quest, but one final challenge remains. They must cross the Cloud Transcending Ferry, a treacherous gorge with a river far below, to reach the Great Thunderclap Monastery where the Buddha resides. The pilgrims are ferried across the gorge by a mysterious boatman in a bottomless boat, a test of their faith and resilience. As they cross, Xuanzang falls into the river below. However, instead of perishing, he is pulled back up by a divine force. This incident signifies that he has shed his mortal stock, transforming into an immortal as a result of his unwavering devotion and the hardships he has endured throughout the journey. Upon reaching the other side, the pilgrims finally stand before the Tathagata Buddha. They are escorted to the library of the monastery and are granted a set of sacred sutras, the very scriptures they have traveled so far to obtain. The monks of the monastery treat them with great reverence, acknowledging the immense trials they have overcome. As the pilgrims prepare to depart, a sudden and unexpected event occurs. A hand appears from the sky and tears open the sutras, revealing that they are blank, wordless pages. The pilgrims are shocked and confused, realizing that they have been given false scriptures. They return to the Buddha, who explains that this was a test of their sincerity and humility. In response to their perseverance, the Buddha orders the true sutras with text to be granted to the pilgrims. Before they leave, Xuanzang presents his golden alms bowl as a token of gratitude acknowledging the divine assistance they have received. With the true sutras in hand, the pilgrims begin their journey back to the land of the East, their mission nearly complete. As the pilgrims set off on their journey back to the land of the East, they are dismissed by the Buddha and begin to travel via clouds. However, Guan Yin, the Bodhisattva of Compassion, realizes that they are one trial short of completing the sacred number of 81 tribulations. In order to fulfill this requirement, she orders them to be dropped off at the heaven-reaching river, where one final challenge awaits them. The great white turtle who had previously helped the pilgrims cross the river reappears and offers to take them across once more. As they near the other bank, the turtle reminds Xuanzang of the promise he made to ask the Buddha about the turtle's cultivation and future. Xuanzang, unfortunately, admits that he forgot to ask, which angers the turtle. In response, the turtle suddenly flips, 
causing the pilgrims and their precious sutras to fall into the river. The pilgrims quickly save Zhuanzang and retrieve the sutras from the water. However, as they lay the soaked sutras out to dry on a boulder, a storm suddenly arises with lightning, thunder, fog, and strong winds. These natural elements reveal themselves to be invisible ghosts who attempt to snatch the sutras. Fortunately, Sun Wukong's quick reflexes and determination prevent the ghosts from succeeding, ensuring the safety of the sacred texts. The pilgrims spend the rest of the day recovering from the ordeal at a nearby village on the eastern bank, a place they had once saved during their journey. This final tribulation serves as the last test of their perseverance and devotion, solidifying their readiness to complete their sacred mission. The journey finally comes full circle as the pilgrims return to the land of the East. Emperor Taizong personally comes out to welcome Xuanzang and his disciples back, honoring them for their incredible achievement. The pilgrims are treated with the utmost respect, enjoying fine meals and a warm reception at the Imperial Palace. As a gesture of gratitude for Xuanzang's profound merit and the successful completion of his mission, Emperor Taizong authors a composition titled Preface to the Sacred Teachings, Shengjiaoxu, which serves as a synopsis of Buddhism and outlines Xuanzang's accomplishments. This composition is meant to immortalize the significance of the sacred scriptures and the pilgrim's journey. Xuanzang is then asked to recite the true sutras in a grand mass, allowing copies of the sacred texts to be made and disseminated. Afterwards, the Buddhist deities, recognizing the pilgrim's success, lead them back to the Tathagata Buddha for a final audience. The Buddha thanks the pilgrims for their dedication and perseverance in completing the mission. As a reward, he bestows saintly positions upon each of them in the Buddhist pantheon. Xuanzang and Sun Wukong are even granted Buddhahood, recognizing their extraordinary merit and transformation over the course of the journey. The pilgrims, having achieved enlightenment and fulfilled their sacred duty, ascend to their rightful places in the Western Heaven. The journey, marked by trials, growth, and divine intervention, concludes with the pilgrims attaining the ultimate spiritual goal, bringing their epic adventure to a triumphant and peaceful end. As the 14-year journey comes to a close, the pilgrims have faced and overcome trials that push them to their limits. From the treacherous battles against powerful demons, to the profound tests of faith and loyalty. Their unwavering determination has brought them to the Western Paradise, where their mission is finally fulfilled. In this final episode of our series on Journey to the West, we've explored the concluding chapters of this epic tale, witnessing the transformation of our heroes as they confront the essence of their quest. The trials they faced were not just battles against external forces, but also journeys of personal growth, spiritual awakening, and ultimate redemption. As they attain enlightenment and take their rightful places in the Buddhist pantheon, the story reminds us of the enduring power of perseverance, faith, and the pursuit of truth. Journey to the West is not just a tale of adventure. It is a timeless reflection on the human spirit and its quest for meaning. Thank you for joining me on this journey through one of the greatest works of Chinese literature. The lessons and adventures of Xuanzang, Sun Wukong, and their companions will continue to inspire readers and viewers for generations to come, reminding us all of the power of faith, wisdom, and the journey itself. Thank you all for watching all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. What did you think? Did I miss any details? Let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome to the channel. I hope I earned a like and subscription in your eyes. If not, that's okay. I'll keep making videos until I do earn it. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for your continued support. I truly appreciate all the views, likes, subscriptions, and kind words and messages. Without you, this channel wouldn't be here today. That's it for now. I hope to see you all in the next one.